So, let me just start off by saying, I have never been good with hooks, ever in my life. So, uh, I apologize that this is a very shitty intro. I've been trying to figure out for the longest how I should start this, but what better way than just to dive right into it. Straight valley flop. Hopefully I don't hurt myself. Um, what's going on, people, with the internet? Um, if you're watching this on BitChute, what the hell is up? If you're watching this on YouTube, eh, how the hell did you get to my channel unless you're watching this on Thunderstruck Gaming? In that case, Thunder, thank you so much for the opportunity. If, if, in the future of me, after me recording this, this is on Thunderstruck Gaming, thank you so much for, so much, ugh, thank you so much for the opportunity. I've been waiting for this day, and I gotta say, for the longest, I've been trying to find the right topic or figure out the right video I should do to upload to TSG the day I ever did get the chance to, but uh, I'm gonna have to resort to this instead, especially since I'm starting back up on my channel again after I quit a year ago. Um, and by the way, in case anybody asks, why the hell did I bring a bitch shoot? Period. Why did I say that? I keep thinking I'm fucking using text-to-speech or speech-to-text, whatever the hell it's called. And I keep saying my punctuations out loud. That's why I actually had to restart this multiple times. Um, anyways, to mention reason why. The reason I must mention, I'm studying over my words like a mother. Why I'm mentioning bitch shoot first, because... Um, once this is edited, I'm probably going to upload that on BitChute first. Uh, cause, screw YouTube and it's BS algorithm. Also, it's going to be very hard to keep myself centered because I'm so used to, used to cussing like a sailor. And we do not give two Fs in my household. Um, also, it is quite disappointing because I've seen plenty of people getting away with swearing on their videos on TSG. But, to be fair, it is later on in the video, and they're not just cussing up a storm like I probably would if I was to let myself go free range in this video. But, I digress. I'm not going to. Now, let's just move on with the video and actually get into the topic at hand today. Now, I think the main thing I just want to talk to you guys, there's two things I just want to talk to you guys about. And, the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is skill-based matchmaking. Now, what can I say about SB Double M that everybody in the Mama hasn't already said? I'll give you a quick hint. Absolutely nothing. To be honest, when it comes to Skill Beach matchmaking itself as a, a topic and um, a program, I don't have anything to add. I, I have absolutely nothing other than. Just like the rest of you, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it with a burning passion. Which is why, unlike most of y'all, and this is probably what's going to decrease my chances to get into TSG, but Thunder, please, if you're listening to this, give me a chance. But, I did the one thing that a lot of you all didn't do, and I know you all are going to give me shit for this, but, I learned my motherfucking lesson, and I didn't buy the next game, the next Call of Duty that dropped Cold War. Now before any of y'all try to rip me a new asshole, let me remind you for the past, how many years now, the past, how many Call of Duties now, three, four, five, that multiple times Activision, not the developers themselves, Treyarch, Infinity Ward, Sledgehammers, even though they did do it in their own ways, with their own decisions, Activision, more than anything, has disappointed us. Time and time and time again, with them intervening in the development of those Call of Duties. Each and every time one dropped, People were pissed off at how the multiplayer was. And each and every time somebody got that copy, they still 
kept playing it, even though they were upset, hated the way you played, maybe certain features, and not to mention skill-based matchmaking. And then once the year is over, we get closer to our next Christmas time, and come when the cycle repeats again, what do you guys do? You buy the game again. You guys complain again. You guys get upset with the developers again and wonder why you bought this game and keep supporting them again. Now, I love the Call of Duty franchise just as much as any of you out there. The campaign more so than anything because most of you are going to eat a fucking dick. I'll get into that later, but, but, hey, hear me out. Hear me out. Just let me get to my point before any of you decide to go randomly in the comments. Oh man, I do it too a lot, but try to let me just finish my thought before you go randomly. Okay? I love the franchise just as much as any of you. I, well, I was about to say it's one of the very first games I'd ever played that got me into gaming in general, but that would be a lie, wrong, and technically wouldn't be fair to all the original Xbox games I played back when my grandparents got me an original Xbox when the 360 was out. <laughs> no joke, I remember when the one dropped and so many people were getting the original Xbox for their kids or whoever they were getting it for because, well, the Xbox One. They assume it's like the first Xbox or the one Xbox or, well, I don't, I don't know how they would have confused it unless there was original Xbox left in store still, which, why would there still be original Xboxes left in um, store during the, the one year age? The, the, whatever, I digress from that. Um, we all remember when that happened, but uh, back during the 360 days, when there was a chance that the council was actually some source. That actually happened to me. This is not actually supposed to be part of the topic or the second topic, but hey, I, my personality, my nature is a bit hyper chaotic. Hey, what can I say? But back to the, what I'm trying to tell you guys the, the, the story. They got me uh, the original Xbox during the 360 days, and this was. I think two or three years into the 360's life cycle, maybe four, because it was getting closer to Christmas time at the time. So uh, I don't remember if it was two, three, four years into the life cycle, but it was a few years into the life cycle. I had gotten the original Xbox instead of the 360. And be believe it or not, up until the 360, I didn't know there were any other consoles made by Xbox that existed out there. Uh, um, I think it wasn't until I did get an actual 360, which I got it sometime within the fourth to fifth year of the 360's life cycle, that I finally started to understand just how many generations of, of councils out there existed from other companies, not necessarily Xbox, since they only had two the original Xbox 360, but just how many game consoles there used to exist back then, because up until that point, I had never played anything other than uh, the original Super Nintendo. The, no, the Wii wasn't out then, right? The, the Wii wasn't out yet. Okay, so the original Super Nintendo, which by the way, um, I'm only 21 years old. I wasn't old enough or young enough, technically, I wasn't born yet when the Super Nintendo came out. I only ever played it or tried it because uh, my mother originally still had hers. Um, then I did try the PS2 back when we moved into this one apartment in a certain neighborhood. I don't remember the name of. Uh, and we had some neighbor, neighbors downstairs because this was a two-story apartment that apparently my mother was friends with the people downstairs for quite a while. Which I honestly didn't know So one day we came home and all the people, all the neighbors from downstairs were saying hi to us as we walked in and specifically started talking to my mother, calling her by her name and then calling me by my name, which confused me like, wait, who the hell 
hang on to you people. I don't, we don't even know you since we moved here. All of a sudden, you know our names? What? How the hell? But that should that should, I, I just didn't know they were right. apparently family friends. But I had a question that. But up until that point, I never ever touched any other game accounts other than the Super Nintendo, the PlayStation 2, and I only ever touched Grand Theft Auto San Andreas on the PS2. And up to that point, I just, I, I, I never owned a console. I didn't own those consoles, I played them. But I never owned a console up until the Xbox. And then it wasn't until the 360 until I realized how many other consoles out there there were. Man, what a long story from my simple little topic. Believe it or not, people, if you ever speak to me in your life, I'm one to go off and tan like this all the time in my conversations. This is nothing new to me. But, up until then, I never really fell in love again until I got the original Xbox. And even though I got the original Xbox, a past generation, while the 360 was out, I wasn't mad. I was confused as to why the hell I had gotten my Christmas present in a shoebox at the time, because when they... I, I, I'm assuming they bought a used Xbox. Uh, when they got it, they packed it up in a shoebox, specifically like a high heel boot shoebox. And I remember unwrapping it, and I was just so fucking confused. I thought I got high heels, and I thought they were playing a prank on me until I found the Xbox inside. And I was confused that it wasn't a 360, but I just saw Xbox, and then I had like a nice stack of games. Like, man, my grandfather, he got me. Almost 10 games, I want to say, at least for the game, when I first got in it. So I had quite a lot of games to play. Thank you, Buffash. I love you. Did I, you. I would not be into gaming if it wasn't for him giving me that Xbox and that stack of games. I don't care if it was past gen. I loved the fucking console. And later on, I learned to love the 360. You don't know it had many of its problems. And one of my fucking consoles did die due to the Red Ring of Death. And unfortunately, no, I never got to be part of that class action lawsuit against Xbox to get a brand new one. What a shame. Only if I had internet back then knew about that shit. But even then, I did eventually go on to the 360. And one of the very first, one of the very first games that I ever, ever played on that 360. There were two games I had, the very first games I ever had. Burnout Paradise. Great fucking game. I need to get that game again. Great fucking game. And Call of Duty. World at War. World at War was the card for me that made me fall in love with the franchise. Because up until that point, I never played any of the Call of Duties. And just like with the Xbox during the 360 area, area, era, I had actually gotten the World at War during the when Modern Warfare was out. And I think a few years later when I eventually found out that there were more Call of Duties within the series, I made sure to tell, I told myself that whenever I got the chance to get my hands on any single one of them, I'm gonna play through the whole fucking campaign all the way through and any other bonus modes that they may have. Even the multiplayer, even though the only way I'm gonna play for with the, the multiplayer was if I was on split screen because I didn't have internet back then. I didn't know what a multiplayer, I didn't know what a Call of Duty multiplayer truly was like, an online match was like, up until Black Ops 2, which I will get into later in the video. Now, I made a promise to myself that I will play every single Call of Duty with the franchise. To this day, I still have yet to play the original first one, Call of Duty Classic. Big Red one, which I'm still not sure which one that's supposed to be in within the series, unless Big Red one was actually two or three and just the name they gave it. I'm not sure. If somebody could please correct me on that in the comment section, that'd be awesome. Um, let's see. I have kind of yet to play Cold War, but I will soon. Um, when I see my cousin again to play on his Xbox because 
I'm not downloading that shit on my janky Xbox. I'm gonna break my console. I know for a fact if I put it on my Xbox the way it is now, I'm gonna break my console. I heard about that breaking PS5s. I, I, it's not worth touching it right now. It isn't. And the fact that you guys still bought it anyways, all I'm gonna say is if your game crashes, if your game breaks, it's your goddamn fault for not waiting. I, I, give me crap all you want. You should have waited when you know better. You people know better how Activision is nowadays. Not Treyarch, Activision. Because poor Treyarch had this game dumped on their lap during the COVID epidemic. Without enough time to properly finish it. So don't any of you motherfuckers be upset, sad, or surprised that is crashing, breaking, or messing up your consoles altogether when you people were too eager to wait. And you should know better by now by Activision's uh, uh, behavior lately. Nevertheless, let's continue. I digress. Promise myself I want to play every Call of Duty ever. Um, oh, Spec Ops on the PSP. I almost forgot. That's also one of the ones I never played, which. Probably never will because I don't know if, you know, they have any other version of the PSP version. So, yeah. And I haven't PSP anymore for a long time. So, what at War was the one that made me fall in love with the franchise? Eventually, I would go on to play 2 and 3. Then, I'm trying to remember, because I think... I actually played Modern Warfare 2 first before I played the original Modern Warfare. But I don't remember. I think I actually did play Modern Warfare before Modern Warfare 2. But, yeah, I eventually went on to Modern Warfare, then Modern Warfare 2. And when I, by the time I got Modern Warfare 2, it was actually during the, the life cycle of the game itself. But, again, no multiplayer. I'm um, no internet, so I couldn't... I, I couldn't know what the multiplayer was like. I completely missed out on the MW2 days. So I have no nostalgia from that time. I don't know what this multiplayer was like. And even if the servers are still open, I still have a chance to go back to the game. If I had a copy, let's be honest, it's probably not going to be anything the same like it was before. Never mind any possible hackers or so on and so forth. But. <sighs> it wasn't until... And now I'm finally going to get into it. Black Ops 2. When I finally got to understand what a Call of Duty multiplayer was like. Oh boy. Let's get into it. You people are going to fucking hate me after this point probably. Now let me get this out of the way, straight forward to your thick fanboy skulls. Black Ops 2 had one of the best campaigns. Black Ops 2 had some great zombies, my this transit's map. Black Ops 2 had some of the best score streaks in all of the franchise's multiplayer. Hands down, there's no doubt about that. And by far, one of the best sentry guns in all of the Call of Duties, which makes you beg the question, why they, why they can't recreate a good sentry gun anymore. Because <laughs> damn thunder, you are, you, every time you plant that sentry gun, it just goes like that. And the reason why it's made by Treyarch. So, what's going on? Especially since the last time I checked, it's usually just copy and paste. You know? But with that said, and let me make this clear, I'm not saying I never had fun on Call of Duty Black Ops 2 multiplayer. But what I am saying is the route. All the memories I have of that game, of all the matches I have ever played, out of all the emotions that are still left over from that game, 
its fury, its hatred. <sighs> this is the third one by. I, I don't even know what the third adjective or whatever it is. I mean, not adjective. I don't. Ugh. Verb? Adverb? I, I have not been in English class in a while. Most of my memories of Black Ops 2 are negative. Some days I swear I have PTSD of that fucking game. I'm sorry, but I hate, I hate with a burning passion Black Ops 2 multiplayer. I hate with a burning passion ever being in those lobbies. And if it, it's, I wish since that game, because again, remember, Black Ops 2, remember this was the very first time I ever got to experience a Call of Duty multiplayer in general. In general. Ever. I know I, 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 I match. I know I, I, I said I tried multiplayer before, you know, offline with some family and friends on the controller. I wasn't specific about that part, but you know, uh, split screen multiplayer. But online match, like I got to first time ever getting, getting to experience that. I, t I don't even know how I killed him in that damn game. And to be fair, to be fair toward Black Ops 2, it wasn't completely the game's fault itself. And in this case, I'm going to definitely blame the developers, not Activision, Treyarch. Because they know good and damn well they could have implemented proper dedicated servers at any time. And between the hit detection and connectivity issues, that's what completely ruined a pretty damn good game for me. Okay? Let me make that very clear. Black Ops 2, if you were to ask me, uh, as younger me, I would I would probably spit in your face for trying to get me to say something good about Black Ops 2. But now, I cannot deny, Black Ops 2, in many ways, was an awesome game. Tons of nostalgia on that game. I'm the campaign of zombies. Multiplayer is nothing but BTSD flashbacks. Because, which is, mind you, is still an issue we still have to this day, and it's, I... Skill based matchmaking isn't necessarily connected to this. But I guess you can argue with how much worse it makes the games now that it can add on to this problem. Assuming they still get this problem, which after seeing tons of Cold War um, online gameplay, mainly from Thunder, did Treyarch actually figure out how to make good hit detection? In what universe do we live in that Treyarch actually has decent hit detection in a game? A multiplayer game? If you were to tell little kid me back then <coughs> that Treyarch actually made a Call of Duty multiplayer where the hit detection actually registers your bullets when it hits your target, not by grazing the shoulder, but by actually hitting the shoulder. I would have told you, quit lying to me. That game doesn't exist. Trier doesn't know how to work on hit detection. I'm not saying they don't know how to make a good game. I'm saying they don't know how to make good hit detection. And God, I mean, the game's definitely filled with this problem. But to this day, it still amazes me to see a bullet actually hit its target and be registered in a trailer multiplayer. Because that's the one thing that ruined it for me in Black Ops 2. How I still get flashbacks to this day about this one time. I was going against this one guy. We both had we both had almost the exact same loadout, the same perks, the same gun. 
the KSG shotgun. And almost the exact same attachment for it. The only difference, literally, literally, the only difference that me and him had was he had a, a is it holographic sight? It wasn't an ACOG. It was the, the little square one with the red dot. I think it's a holographic sight. That one. And I just went iron sights. And before you try to say that is why he had the advantage of me, shut up because you didn't hear the full story. We both had the exact same class practically. The only difference being he had a holographic sight. I had iron sight. I load three slugs directly into the chest. And when I mean directly, I mean between I mean between both of his titties directly in the middle of the chest. Point blank. Three slugs. One, two, three. I died? Wait a minute. Replay that back. I don't actually, I'm not, I'm not actually gonna replay anything because we got a better clip for that. Um, but, replay that back. One slug, two slug, three slug. I'm dead? Wait a minute. One slug into him, two slug into him, three slug into him. But I'm the one who's dead. Comes the kill cam. In his view, I don't fire a single fucking shot. I, don't know, don't, I don't care. Don't anybody tell me, well, when Call of Duty had this problem, it wasn't only Treyarch Call of Duty, it wasn't only Black Ops 2, I don't care. I don't give a fuck if it was in other Call of Duties because, first of all, it shouldn't have been. That should have been an issue they fixed a long time ago. Second of all, it ruined the fucking game for me. It made me despise what is basically a good game. Come to kill him. I don't fire a single shot. But he puts one, sh one slug into my shoulder. Literally, my shoulder. I'm dead. I never exit out of a match. I said it. I never exited a match before. So fucking quick in my life. Since that match. I, I would just stop playing the game for a whole week. And ever since that point... I was very cautious when I ever jumped into a multiplayer in any Call of Duty. Not just Treyarch. I'm not only specifically being unfair to Treyarch. Any Call of Duty, whether it's made by Infinity Ward or Sledgehammer or Treyarch, I go into that multiplayer with extreme, utter, and furious caution, ready to exit out of the lobby as soon as possible to turn off my Xbox and say, Fuck this game, it can suck the rim of my nuts. And nowadays, um, you can argue skill based matchmaking is making, well, any of its problems even worse. Because now not only maybe if you still have that issue, are your bullets not registering in Cold War? If that's happening, again, I don't know if it is. But you got people booty sliding, bunny hopping all over the place, lighting your ass up like a fucking Christmas tree. Skill be snack making has become such a problem. People have abandoned Call of Duty altogether or have been forced to Reverse boost or get around the skill beach matchmaking in some way, form, or fashion. And thus, now you got all these YouTubers abusing uh, lobby drops just to get, well, sometimes just to have fun and actually be able to. Do something to match without sweating their sack off, leaving a sweaty imprint on their seat. 
but in most cases, just drop nukes on disabled people. <laughs> hey, listen, to be fair though, how is anybody supposed to know anybody is disabled in a lobby? Listen, I remember one time, okay, I remember one time, uh, this guy, he uploaded a video to TSG. It's been a very long time. I don't know if he's still doing YouTube because I didn't subscribe to him personally. I don't know if he's ever uploaded to TSG again because I don't remember his name. But I remember this guy, he uploaded to TSG. Not only did he record the gameplay, but he recorded himself playing the game. And mind you, this guy was whooping some ass. This guy had one hand, one left hand, and a nub. Okay? This guy was playing the game with one hand and a nub. And he was whooping ass. He was doing go so good, he looked like he could whoop my ass with both my hands. That's how well he was doing. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say, well, this guy can do it. Why can't the rest of you disabled people do it? Just because he's handy capable doesn't mean you guys are going to be there yet. And even then, you don't necessarily have to be there. You just want to have fun. We all just want to have fun. Which is why people are abusing the drop-in system. People just want to have fun for once, like they used to. And actually get a kill. Maybe actually punt stomp. Maybe actually get their streaks. The reason why I'm only bringing this up is because I saw that one video by Thunder. Uh, I forget the name of that YouTube. He came out admitting that he reverse boost got called out by somebody because their friend was disabled and got their ass stomped. Listen, nobody knows what your conditions are on the other side of the screen. Hell, it was like that one video when, when Thunder was using the strobe light of justice and the dude had to scream out the tongue of his lung, hey, 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 don't use it, don't use it, I have epilepsy, please don't, I'm gonna get a seizure. Do you remember that, Thunder? Now let's say, God forbid, that guy did get a seizure. And look at the reality of the situation. First of all, I'm pretty sure, and that was the Black Ops 4, right? I'm pretty sure Black Ops 4 had a, a seizure warning, okay? I'm pretty sure they had a seizure warning. Secondly, many people are very, very, very aware, very aware that <laughs> this strobe Light of Justice has, well, just that, a strobe light. So let's say, unfortunately, God forbid, Thunder did give this guy an epileptic seizure from using the strobe light. And mind you, he wouldn't have known till dude said something. Whose fault is it? Thunder or the guy who decided to pick up the epileptic cane? The game that could possibly give him a seizure. The game with the flashing lights. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The guy who had epilepsy, had he gotten a seizure, it would have been his fault for playing the fucking game with the blinking lights. So, if you're a disabled person, you hop into a lobby, and you're getting your ass whooped in a game when you know, A, people have two hands. B, they're probably going to play better than you. See, people want to have fun and are not going to start abusing the skill-based matchmaking system or dropping system because it's stupidly easy, it's hard to get caught or kicked out for that, and people want to have fun. Now, this one, um, it's hard to say that it's you. I, could, I, could you name that one on yourself? It's completely like the seizure situation when you really think about it, but you're still playing it. Anybody, literally, anybody could end up hopping into that lobby. What the fuck do you think is eventually going to happen? If it wasn't by a higher level, eventually somebody in that lower lobby would have figured it out and stomped your ass. Then what? Or better yet, what if that, what if that YouTuber just also happened to be disabled? But... Just like that one dude I mentioned, he just happened to whoop fucking ass with one hand and a nub. Would he still be able to use that same excuse? Oh, what the hell, man? You didn't hear whoopie so mad? She's like, man, I'm disabled. How am I going to play the game? 
Oh, motherfucker, I'm disabled too. And what? Oh, oh shit. Did, yeah, oh, oh shit. You didn't realize it. Nobody knows what you have, what your situation is on the other side of the screen. And the same thing, vice versa. And she was just... But, we know how much of a issue it's going to be smash making this. It's upsetting more people now in the process. And guess what? Y'all still refuse to learn your lessons. However, this might be the opportunity to force Activision to learn a fucking lesson for once. Unless the Scooby Smash Painting was implemented by Treyarch from the SK, in that case, uh, then no one's learning a lesson. Oh, 35 minutes in recording. This is not getting out to THG. This is way too damn long. Oh, I guess I'll have to save the second, to the second topic for another video. That one might just get out to THG. Anyways, as I was saying, this new way of hopping into, uh, without a reason, avoiding the SV-double-M might just be an opportunity to finally teach Activision a lesson and make them learn their lesson once and for all about skill-based matchmaking and do what they did in COD fucking mobile, which is implement a ranked and a casual. Playlist. So basically what I'm suggesting is do just that. Abuse the fuck out of the dropping uh, technique. So avoid skill based matchmaking. Get your fun, get your clips, get the fuck out. And eventually, when they realize their shit isn't working, people keep doing this to get around it, and as they're touching their precious noobs, maybe they'll just learn a fucking lesson. I mean, because uh, how else do you think they're supposed to, to, you know? Some people actually want them to find a way to combat that. How? Like, think realistically. How are they supposed to combat people just dropping into bot lobbies? Like, to be all fairness, that will be very difficult on Treyarch. And I bet you if they wanted to, they would remove completely. Big Daddy Activision ain't gonna let that. You don't understand. Big Daddy, Big Daddy Activision can barely get to the keyboard or to the screen to see what all, all the fuss is about. He's being, they're being dragged by all the cash in their pockets. They, they can barely move. There's just so much fucking cash in their pockets. You think they care? No, they're sitting on their, their comfy ass recliners, counting their money, laughing like the fucking money tickles, as the only one said in that one song. And they're not listening to a goddamn problem or a complaint you have. Why? Because you stupid fucks keep paying for the fucking game and playing it again and again and again. And when you have an issue, you keep playing it again and again and again. And what do you do afterwards? You go play. You're upset. You go make your videos. And then you go play the game again. Do you really see why they're never going to listen to you? You guys, you people, should have learned your motherfucking lesson back with Modern Warfare. And here we are again. And whatever Call of Duty has been coming after, that's your code word, you guys are gonna do it all over again. Because that's how fucking thick headed you people are. How fucking blind by your family is and you are in nostalgia and you just won't fucking give. You keep giving them more and more and more money. Why you complain why they don't do anything to fix the issues? 
You want them to listen to you? Stop playing the fucking game and stop giving them your money. Had you done that in the first place, maybe they would have been listening to you. But no. You guys didn't do that, and you guys are still not going to do that. So, do yourselves a favor and take that to consideration. Not the fact that you guys need to stop fucking paying the game and paying for it, but abusing the drop-in technique to give them a taste of their own medicine. How else are you going to get them to listen and pay attention? <laughs> you're going to go play some more? You're going to make some more videos with the game in the background? While well, as you complain about the game? Oh, look at this game, man. I'm too tired of playing it. Meanwhile, you keep fucking getting more and more and more and more and more and more and more clips for the, your channel. Oh, I hate the game. Oh, why do I do this? Oh, why do I torture myself? I keep playing this game. Good question. Why do you keep torturing yourself? Why do you keep playing the game if you know you don't like it? Turn off the fucking game and play something else. Hell, go back and pay, play the class, past Call of Duty. But chaotic. I want to play Call of Duty. I, I, I want to talk just like Black Ops Target. Then why are you playing Cold War? Go play mobile if you want to have that back up to it. Man, let me explain something to you people, All right? Real quick, just how much mobile has to back up to experience, okay? Now let's ignore the fact that it does have some modern warfare maps and weapons, okay? Okay. Scorch Chiefs 2, and I think one from Advanced Warfare. Ah, the XS1 Goliath was actually a pretty fun score street. Um, but, I digress. Ignore that for now. The guns, they got them from Black Ops 2. Final one first of all, but Black Ops 2. They got some of the maps from Black Ops 2. The characters look like Black Ops 2. And the guns feel like Black Ops 2. The gameplay feels like Black Ops 2. The connection feels like Black Ops 2. The butter knife. They back, brought back the butter knife. From Black Ops 2 and Cod Mobile. And before enemies complain that you don't want to play it on a piece, uh, 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 I'm sorry, your phone or, or your tablet, most of these probably have a decent PC. A decent end PC that probably run a decent basic. Android emulator. And if your issue is playing with a controller, there are emulators that you can connect wired and wireless controllers to. So, knowing that, instead of fucking complaining and complaining and playing that same game over and over again. Stop, down, and the Android emulator that'll work on your PC. Don't cut mobile on there. Get your controller to work if you got the right emulator. And have your fun. And shut the fuck up. If you are, however, into playing Cold War, great. Still shut the fuck up, because the only way call, um, they're going to listen to you is if you stop. Just remember that. If you're enjoying it, great. You still have complaints, just shut up. They don't care, they're not going to listen to you, just shut up. Just, just shut up already. Just shut up. You don't want to learn your lesson the first, the second, the third, the fourth, or the fifth time. So please, play your game. And just shut the fuck up. Or play something else. I personally don't give a flying fuck about the multiplayer. The only thing I'm excited about for Cold War, the only, 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 only thing I'm 
excited about for Cold War is to finally have the Zombies Multiverse finally leak into the main campaign first. Do you know how long I've been waiting for that to happen? I've been wishing since Black Ops 2 for that to happen. Ever since I found out that Frank Woods had 115 and the Hellhounds tattooed on his arm. I've been begging for, for a crossover between the zombies first and the main campaign in the first. And now, now we're finally going to fucking get it. Never mind the proper connection from Treyarch's gods to Infinity Wars gods. Do you know how long I've been waiting for that? Barely anybody's talking about it because they only give a fuck about the multiplayer when it's been, been made very clear from the get-go. They don't care. They're not listening. They just want what's in your wallet. Learn your fucking lesson. And yes, I know. I agree with every last single one of you. They don't make it a whole lot more better than they just did what they did in COD Mobile. Just implement a ranked and casual playlist. The fact that they managed to implement it in the mobile version, there should be absolutely no excuses whatsoever why they can't do it again in the council version. Oh, there's no ex excuse me. There's no excuses as to why they shouldn't have done on Modern Warfare 2019, let alone Cold War. And yet we are. Another year, another Call of Duty, more complaints from people who just can't learn their fucking lesson. When will you learn, people? When will you fucking learn? Why won't you learn your lesson? Just learn your lesson already. Anyway, I think that'll be the end of the video. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not editing 47 minutes off of this. I'm just going to have to get some gameplay for this and that's it. Yikes. Yikes. Holy shit, I rambled for a while. Yikes. <laughs> this is definitely not going on to TSG. Well... If somehow Thunder does ever watch this, I, I, well, I do have a second video idea, um, and I don't know if Thunder actually checks out other YouTubers' channels when they uh, submit a video, um, but if Thunder did somehow listen to all 48 minutes of this video, holy shit, Thunder, was that actually that interesting? If so, thank you. Um... If not, uh, I look like an idiot. <laughs> I just look like an idiot. But anyways, that'll be the end of it. I gotta wrap this up. I'm gonna try to get into that second video so I can actually put it on TSG um, and hopefully make it no more than 15 minutes. <laughs> I doubt I'll be able to do that, but let's see what we'll do. Let's see what I will do. Thank you for watching, Bitch Shoot. If somehow you're watching this on YouTube, how the hell did you find my channel? And how the hell did you find this video? Because I would imagine the algorithm would just... Ugh. Just push me out of the way. I mean, you can argue why am I uploading to YouTube anyways. But again, I want to eventually get Thunder's attention. In a shorter video. Hopefully. I need to stop talking. The chaos ring. For as hyper as it is, hyper chaotic out. Um, I don't think that's going to be my official intro, or I mean outro. Um, just saying it.